Mr. President, uh, what do you think that what's the key challenges uh, that it's going to face every economy, also countries, uh, with the coronavirus? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, we are facing with a really global challenge. Firstly, on a national level, uh, the, the, the societies, the states are going to face with um, huge economical decrease with all uh, social and political consequences. Uh, here in Europe, uh, we have specific type of democracy and definitely it will be challenged by uh, political forces willing to change situation. Uh, so uh, in some states it's already visible. Uh, secondly, uh, it will uh, affect uh, very hard many families and it's uh, uncertain uh, what will be a political re re reaction to that fact that many people are going to lose jobs, that many people uh, are suffering not only by coronavirus, but like in Croatia with other uh, problems like earthquake. And uh, what I'm very worried about are consequences on global international politics, because it's uh, somehow in nature of politicians and politics to survive and uh, to avoid responsibility and someone else should be responsible for virus or for uh, uh, problems in global economy in political relation and we can already see what's going on and that some states are accusing the other states without any evidences and I think uh, as time is going, uh, this uh, tendency will be more and more visible. Uh, but how are you going like, you know, tackle the problem also with unemployment and with uh, hunger issue because poverty, because uh, with the World uh, Food Program uh, Executive Director's announcement, it shows that around 265 million population is going to start with uh, hunger and definitely yeah, mm -hmm. our country is going to stay affected from this because we are small countries and we are more vulnerable to effects of the coronavirus yeah that's a really huge problem especially for countries like croatia uh, which uh, didn't take enough care about own production of food previously uh, so uh, I, I think we need to, to change the policy. We have to support our producers, but that, of course, that does not mean to close our market or to, to make some kind of isolation for our uh, agricultural economy. Uh, so uh, it's very specific in every country. We had problem that we had uh, some subsidies, uh, not bad subsidies for producers, but there was no control. Many of people just collected support from the state and didn't produce anything. So I think that uh, very strict criteria should be applied and then those people or companies who are willing to produce because we have very frightful uh, um, uh, land, uh, they must be supported and uh, Croatia can easily be not only importing but also exporting country concerning food. Uh, definitely, uh, it need not only uh, fiscal changements in our politics, uh, but also uh, awareness that uh, now it's proper time to to change uh, orientation to support uh, agriculture and to uh, and to implement the mo most modern. Uh, technologies uh, that will allow us to produce more, much more than today. Uh, if we can, like, <laughs> just to give a question, like, you know, if we can test responsibility, solidarity, and uh, credibility of European Union in a coronavirus issue, how do you evaluate uh, European Union on that? So uh, definitely uh, it, it was and it is big challenge for the European Union and the re reaction uh, in the field of solidarity was not perfect, not a good one. 
um, it was not without solidarity, but solidarity was not the main issue for, for most governments in the European Union. Uh, it's a very important school for the future because if we like European Union to develop and to be more efficient uh, club of states, uh, then we have to think more globally, European Union, and less selfish as some countries uh, do. Uh, it's also very important uh, that uh, European Union uh, is, uh, I think, struggling not only for um, for to fight the coronavirus and to keep economy, but for basic democratic values as well. Uh, because uh, now we have again borders, we have again uh, selfishness of some governments, and it's not a good one. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm not happy with the situation when some of European countries join a campaign to blame some other countries uh, for everything now, uh, like China and Russia. Okay, we are allies with the United States, we are a member of the European Union, we are almost all member of NATO as well, but it does not mean that we should uh, start the uh, fight with some other important uh, key players in the world. Uh, I don't like uh, many uh, articles published in American and European press uh, trying to put fire in relation between uh, Western countries and China and Russia. Oh, that, um, uh, that's definitely uh, because with blaming you are never going to solve the problem of the coronavirus and uh, the, the thing that what we saw China could solve the coronavirus uh, so fast and so efficiently and uh, it was really very amazing like you know how they could solidate uh, entire like you know government system and uh, one of the questions is like, you know, everyone is now discussing why is there is so much attacks to, towards the World Health Organization? What's the problem? Uh, why we just like, you know, had a problem with uh, Paris Accord Agreement on a climate change. And now we are attacking, uh, well, not we are, but some government, uh, <laughs> some government attacking, attacking uh, the World Health Organization. And uh, even uh, two days ago or something, like Australian government uh, asked uh, the World Health Organization to start uh, providing, like, you know, uh, respond to the accusations. I mean, no one does this during this pandemic situation because it should be a solidarity to World Health Organization because there is no one, any institution who could, like, you know, to be in a solidarity or just facilitate that? Definitely, uh, we can start from the fact that uh, probably the uh, reaction of World Health Organization was not the best one. Okay, but uh, what should be uh, the government's uh, reaction? It should be to make this organization more efficient and better than before. And that, that's in interest of all states and humanity in total. So uh, I think that uh, reaction, like American reaction to the World Health Organization, is completely inappropriate and counterproductive. That's not good. Uh, so uh, let's fight for a better organization and not to kill organization. Uh, but uh, it's also, or primarily, I think it's a syndrome that I've already mentioned. Someone must be blamed. Why to blame ourselves for our stupid uh, reactions, for our stupid statements, public statements, uh, if we can blame someone else like World Health Organization? And it's um, unfortunately unfortunate policy that's uh, putting back uh, humanity in the wrong direction. And also, it's very interesting, like when we see like you know, the statistics like countries like Croatia, Azerbaijan, or Latvia, or Georgia are like uh, tackling with the coronavirus better than the big countries, like, you know, superpower countries, besides of Germany and uh, China, how it's, mm -hmm. and uh, including Singapore. But how it's possible, like, you know, with a small economy, the governments and the leadership could be able to tackle, like, you know, this problem, like, you know, so 
efficiently than a big countries with a bigger economy? I think there are several reasons. Firstly, definitely it's much harder to control uh, interaction between people in huge countries, huge big cities than in smaller societies. That's definite. But also I think those uh, states has different tradition in obeying in obeying uh, some rules, uh, special rules in uh, time of crisis. And what I consider the best, uh, the, the most important advantage of Croatia is system of public health. Uh, definitely it shows that not everything should be completely privatized. Uh, we had we are not a rich country, but we have a very good and uh, very organized health system, and that helped a lot. So uh, we had in one period tendency to make private uh, even health system, but after this experience, I think no one will think about it uh, because we have a long tradition of uh, public health system. Uh, we even uh, had people who exported. Uh, this type of, of uh, health organization, a health system in the other countries, and we have very good tradition with good results. In spite, we are not the best in technology and uh, money uh, invested in health. Uh, one of the questions is like, you know, which reforms you would advise like to have uh, with United Nations because uh, it's impossible like you know if Secretary General is calling the Security Council to have a meeting and to have a ceasefire on a conflict issue or like you know to have a solidarity but there is no call and there is no response and there are among the five countries someone is definitely going to to say no or to give a veto and what what should be done like you know in, all, in order to have uh, uh, to get back the credibility to UN or to build up a new institution so i don't think that new institution will give better result because uh, international relations depending on big powers is just reality and can you imagine new organization without some of those big uh, states it will be Contraproductive to, to to make another organization. So uh, I think that's a long-term fight for humanity to change international politics and the world uh, political community. Uh, definitely, uh, if I think about future as idealist, that means that uh, veto system will not function anymore. That uh, many more countries will be included in decision-making process, uh, but unfortunately, it's not uh, reality. Uh, big powers are not willing to share their power, and uh, so that's uh, the most important problem. But uh, we cannot uh, just uh, close our eyes and say, okay, we are going to do something else, because uh, the only answer is long-term uh, uh, changement of relations, of understanding of uh, international community step by step, and uh, the way will not uh, be always in the right direction. It will go up, go, the, we are going to have ups and downs as we had already in the past, and we have to be uh, patient and to insist on change. We have many, uh, many examples how the international society was changing uh, last hundred years. I think it's visible. Uh, let's just think about uh, responsibility for war crimes. Yes, still uh, many um, countries are not obeying international humanitarian laws, but more and more do. So uh, long-term process is visible, uh, but we are not going to live enough long to see the final result. Definitely. And uh, as a loss, uh, because I think that definitely there is a need for solidarity. And uh, as you supported us, like, you know, with two resolutions, one which was by Gordon Brown uh, on G20 countries leadership, uh, supporting like World Health Organization, and one by Ismail Sregeldin on the food project. And I think that, you know, uh, it's one of the few occasions that in our lifetime, we survived. And we are seeing that there is uh, human beings are becoming to be more solidarity. 
and everyone is just trying to have more supporting each other, even by distance in this situation. But uh, that's, a, I mean, it's going to be very challenging uh, to see how international organizations are going to survive, how they're going to adapt to the new uh, circumstances. But uh, that's a challenge that uh, it's a call that we have to respond and uh, that's our responsibility. And uh, also I would like to thank you so much for supporting this uh, uh, President Aliyev's fund, the uh, COVID-19 fund. And it was really very really big uh, support from your side and it's been, it's really very highly appreciated. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, definitely when we uh, study history of humanity, uh, we are faced with two opposite tendencies. One is solidarity. We have so many uh, important examples during human history of solidarity of people, of solidarity of nations, of solidarity of states. But from the other side, we have also the opposite tendency, it's selfishness, a tendency to govern uh, in the other countries and uh, some kind of uh, roots or, or some kind of uh, ugly side of human nature. Wars, especially wars and, and uh, some political approach that's not uh, in accordance with first, first tendency with solidarity. So uh, it's, uh, I think, a very important task of uh, influential people, politicians, but also people exposed to the, the public to uh, support the culture of solidarity. It's very important and to develop uh, sensitivity of people for the others and from the other side to oppose to uh, those politics and politicians who are uh, tending to, to start wars, to close their countries, not to participate in uh, solidarity all around the world. So I think that um, this is also a long-term project and uh, it's not uh, certain how it finished. Unfortunately, every day we can see a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, sides of human nature, solidarity, love, um, uh, willingness to help, but from the other side, uh, we can see very, very opposite examples. Today, Concerning coronavirus, virus, uh, uh, we see that even solidarity is misused for uh, politics. Uh, we see some interpretation of really important help of China or Russia to the other countries as a political maneuver. And I think it's wrong, it's uh, completely uh, against uh, the building of, of uh, solidarity as a main principle of human beings. So uh, thank you everyone, every, to everyone who is supporting the others. And uh, I would like to see that public opinion of all countries are promoting solidarity and uh, being thank, uh, thankful to those people, those countries, those organizations who are willing to help to the others. Uh, definitely. Uh, what you said, like, you know, China uh, so far, like, you know, started supporting all the countries and uh, China has been supporting and providing all the resources that it had in its responsibility in order, like, you know, with its uh, business people or like, you know, with its communities or with its governments or with communities, like, you know, just to be able to support every government. Uh, in case of, I saw like, you know, last time with Croatia, they sent a, a dozen of masks and the protection dress codes and so on. And in the case of Azerbaijan or Georgia or in Latvia or in Serbia, uh, they've been like, you know, supporting uh, as much as possible. And that's the way like, you know, the solidarity is look, should look like. And, uh, but, you know, the, the, History is going to teach us, but so far we are not a good students. We yeah, can definitely. be able to learn a, a, a good lessons from the history. From World War, uh, War II, first and second, and also like in you know, a Cold World War. And uh, during all the situations, we've been like, you know, still having personal egos and the personality issues and you know just fighting for our like you know we are number one we are the best we are the greatest nation 
And that's not going to work because if you are just going to have a coronavirus in, the, in your neighborhood, it's definitely going to affect you. Definitely. Even if you don't have like, you know, super power. You know, uh, I was, I was as a university professor and previously as a student or pupil in the school, I was always impressed uh, on uh, approach of our textbooks in history. Uh, who is celebrated in those textbooks? Not great, uh, great inventors, not great, uh, not great art, uh, uh, art, not great uh, humanity, uh, but who, big, big uh, military people. People who were uh, leading wars, who succeed in wars, who were conquering the others, they always uh, celebrated in uh, textbooks. And that shows that our uh, nature is unfortunately not perfect, but not always oriented uh, to the peace, solidarity. And uh, I think we should start also with treatment of uh, textbooks, uh, culture, we have to ch change our culture and uh, by that also our nature. Our nature is not perfect. And the last question, uh, Mr. President, you are also like, you know, playing a beautiful piano. And uh, how do you think like, you know, culture can affect and culture should be, uh, or uh, art should be playing a role uh, with during this uh, pandemic situation? How it should like, you know, help the humanity to overcome so uh, we have, unfortunately, we have in experience with uh, war recently, relatively recently. We had having experience with floods, with earthquakes, and in all those situations, the art was very supportive to encourage people and to generate good feelings, solidarity. Uh, but uh, this situation is for art. Uh, more problematic than even than war. Why? Because during the war, uh, artists had possibility to participate in campaigns, uh, to participate uh, with their noble messages, and uh, they could survive as well. Because being artist is also a profession, like all the other professions. And today, without public performances, without any income, the art is on very very in very good, very bad condition. Unfortunately, many, many artists are now really suffering life conditions. And now even in my country, we are uh, looking how to help artists to survive and to contribute to, now enable them to contribute. So our government has quite important measures to support uh, enterprises, to support uh, uh, industry, to support trade companies. But unfortunately, not enough programs to support artists, somehow the entrepreneurs as well. So we have to understand that uh, the artists uh, should have possibility to live relatively normally like other entrepreneurs. Uh, and I'm very convinced, despite very bad conditions uh, for, for art and artists, uh, the, they are going to provide their intellectual, uh, emotional, and the other support uh, to humanity and to help them to survive this very, very unpleasant situation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. So nice to talk to you. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Roshan.